So this big breakthrough in 1915, which said that gravity itself is to do with the way that space and time are curved by masses like the sun. So his explanation for why does the Earth go around the sun would be because space and time are curved by the presence of the sun. But then he predicted a year later that you could get ripples in space and time. And that's what's been observed, or was announced yesterday. So we've seen a photo of essentially two black holes bumping into each other. Is that right? But this is the thing. So, so the one remarkable thing, as you said, is it's yet another confirmation of this wonderful theory, arguably the greatest achievement of the human imagination, I would say, this theory that Einstein published. That's, in, that's an, almost a Nobel Prize on its own. But when you uh, look at the details, I've got the paper in front of me, actually, the thing that was seen, you heard it there, that little noise, that was two black holes colliding. Now, one of them was 36 times the mass of the sun. Right. Imagine right. that. 36. You can fit a million Earths inside the sun. One of these things was 36 times more massive than that. Another one was about 30 times the mass of the sun. And I've got this little graph here that says what happened. So you heard at the start of that noise, when it was a little low frequency noise, they were traveling around each other about a third the speed of light, which is kind of incomprehensible. One tenth of a second later, they were traveling at approaching uh, two thirds the speed of light. <laughs> so you've got this thing that's 30 times the mass of the sun that accelerates by, from a third the speed of light to two thirds the speed of light in a tenth of a second. They smash together. They release more energy in that collision than all the stars in the observable universe combined. And that's what that little, the end of the little chirp that you heard was. And they caused what Kit Thorne, one of the great uh, physicists, who the theoretical physicist who proposed this experiment way back, said it's like a, a storm in space and time, a time storm, if you like. It shakes space and time so vigorously that a billion years later and a billion light years away on Earth, we see a little shift in space and time at the level of about a thousandth the diameter of an atom. Let me and just we play, measure it. Are it's play, ridiculous. Let me play the sound again. Well, I would have expected so, something that sounded a bit more like a crash. Well, at the start of that, there were these two black holes orbiting around each other. At the end of it, there's one black hole, right? That literally, during that time, uh, one black hole, 60 times the mass of the sun. I think it's a remarkable thing. Now, I, because of the length of time it takes light to reach us, Brian, we know that what we are watching so far away must be a long time in the past. Is it yeah. possible that we could see the beginning of our own universe if we look far enough? It's, it's the right question, um, because this is, you said, about a billion light years away, just a bit more. Um, the point is that these gravitational waves, these waves in space and time, go through everything. They don't get blocked by dust or galaxies. And that means that if we could build a big enough detector, and we know how to do it, so we need a better a series of detectors than this remarkable thing called LIGO in America, but we have plans to build them, then we can see further away. Now, if you can see back 13.8 billion light years instead of um, 1 billion, you can see the gravitational waves from the beginning of time. And this really is, what, what are these things that what we see by light, light waves, or perhaps radio waves? That's what astronomy has always been. Um, these are the same. You're taking a picture in the same way, essentially, except it's very more di it's di more difficult to take. But we've got a picture of these black holes colliding. That means that you can take a picture, in principle, of the moment just after the creation of the universe. It, this opens up the possibility of taking a photograph of the beginning of the universe, and we've not been able to do that because we can't see the light from the beginning of the universe. On Twitter, a man called A.D. and his dog, who may or may not be a scientist, has taken issue with some of what you've said. He says a black hole can't hit a black hole because one would swallow the other one up. Your comment on well, that? I, I have absolutely no comment to make, except we've observed them coalescing together. So, so there were two black holes at the start of that little noise. There was one at the end of it. So we can, we can argue about the semantics. So, but, but the idea that a black hole doesn't have an edge... So it can't crash into anything. 
Well, no, that's not true. They can merge together, and, and that's, what we've, that's what we've observed. But I should say as well, we talk about Nobel Prizes and great discoveries. We've never seen two black holes in orbit around each other before. That's the first time we've ever seen that. Uh, it wasn't very long, of course, because about a tenth of a second later, they were one black hole, they'd merged together. And the remarkable thing, again, if you look at the, the paper, is a beautiful publication, actually, that's been published. You see the prediction of what that sound that you heard, or more, in more detail, the data, what it should look like, what this t storm in time and space should look like if, if Einstein's theory is correct. So it's a prediction from this 100-year-old theory, and it fits precisely across the data that was taken by this. And remember, this is two experiments at both ends of the United States. One of them saw it in Washington State on the West Coast, and then about 10 milliseconds later, which is quite a long time, another one saw exactly the same thing in Louisiana. So that's this stretching and squashing of space and time moving across the United States at the speed of light from, a, from this collision. And that's what we've seen, which is why it's just a beautiful piece of physics. And you could just imagine, well, maybe we can't imagine, if Einstein were alive today, he would be so excited to see the photo, to actually see it. Oh, I mean, he didn't know that black holes existed at the time. I mean, this is, this is the power of this thing that came out of his imagination. And it's, it's often, we often give too much credit to this. We say we, the, the mind of one man or one genius. But in this case, I think that his theory of general relativity really was his theory. There was very little contribution from other people to it. And it's today, it is, it is telling us what black holes colliding together would, should look like, and we're measuring it in these advanced 21st century experiments with lasers and the, the best technology we can deploy. It's remarkable. Thank you so much for talking about it, Brian. Pleasure. Professor Brian Cox. Professor Sheila Rowan of the University of Glasgow, where she is director of the Institute of Gravitational Research. I've been working on this for, yeah, best part of the last three decades. And when we say this, we mean the idea that you can change time by changing space. Is that right? The fact that time and space are all wrapped up together and that when explosions happen far out in the universe, the whole universe shakes a little bit. I, and uh, this is where we really struggle, because we there is no area of human experience where time is shifted. So if I carry a stopwatch around with me, it keeps ticking, right? So what do I have to do to, to mess up the stopwatch? What do I have, do I have to do, go at light speed or what? Yeah, if you go really, really fast, strange things happen. So that's, that's, and that's something we don't usually experience here on Earth. So that's, that's why some of these things that we've been talking about sound so hard for people to get to grips with. But what you've seen here is because of this massive collision, as Brian was saying, of two black holes, yep. you've seen this ripple effect that Einstein, see, I'm, I'm on it now, that Einstein talked about. Yes, and it's, it's absolutely an amazing thing. Um, we built detectors... Um, to search for this, and people have been doing that for, for not just the last 25 years, people have been doing that for the last 50 years. So um, it's been a long time trying to do this, and the experiments are hard. It's a tiny, tiny shaking of the universe that we're trying to detect. And so that's, that's why it's taken so long to get here. And what's kind of amazing to us is, really fabulously, we just turn these on, and immediately from... Far out in the universe, there was that whoop that you were playing just Which before. I, I was only <laughs> suspicious of. I, I didn't mean to annoy Brian, but when I played it, let's just play it again. That sounds like somebody on one of those old Moog synthesizers. <laughs> you know, so I, we have to be sceptical. Well, we have to be sceptical. And to be honest, the scientists involved in this also, when that first came in, we were so surprised. It came so quickly and it was so beautiful and such a big signal. We also were amazed, and so the reason it's take us, taken us really the last months to be telling you about this is all the checking that we did to be absolutely sure that that's really what we detected. Okay, and that is the sound of two black holes coming together, and, and my question to, to Brian was really where we go from here. What, what, what would excite you even more than this, Sheila? Wow, so two black holes colliding is pretty spectacular. I know, um, I know. We, we believe we'll see more, more black holes colliding. This is the, the very first time anyone's ever seen this. We know that we're able to do this now. 
we can sense those black holes from a certain volume out in space. We're going to make our detectors even more sensitive, as Brian mentioned, seeing further out into space, and we're going to map where these black holes are throughout our universe. And what we've, we've heard a lot about black holes in movies and stuff. We understand that they are not even space, they're an absence of everything. Is that correct? They're, if you get dragged into one, you're not coming out. That's right. It would be an unhappy day to find yourself too close to a black hole. Um, they are amazing things in that they're... We, we're used to feeling gravity here on Earth. That's something everybody understands. If you, you pick up a pencil and let it go, gravity causes it to, to drop. But the gravity around a black hole is so strong that not, nothing can escape from a certain distance from the black hole. That's what's called the event horizon. People have probably heard about that in films. Not even light can escape, and that's why black holes are called black. OK, is there, just in case people are worried, is there a danger we could be dragged in? I think that's something you can sleep easy at night about. Because they're not close enough. There, there's a supermassive black hole, in fact, at the centre of our own galaxy, but it's not going to trouble us any time. <laughs> We're not being gradually inched <laughs> towards it. We can't, there's nothing to hang on to, is there? <laughs> you know, I'm not going to lose any sleep over that. In, inside the black hole, is, is it just... Does it funnel into a separate galaxy? What do you find? Do you know, we don't know. We've Because nothing can escape from the black hole... We, do, we really don't know what's inside there. It's, a, it's fantastically interesting because that's where, who knows what happens to the laws of physics, and there can be nothing more exciting than trying to answer these big questions. Thank you. Thanks for your enthusiasm. Professor Sheila Rowan of the University of Glasgow, where she is director of the Institute of Gravitational Research. So you basically spend all day just dropping things. <laughs> we spend all our time trying to feel things all, not quite being dropped, but things colliding, just not locally, quite far away.